Welcome to Ascension 2021. From now on, we have the decisions and that's the representing from the notions as an all-in-one workspace. This is all the tools, including no task is an all. The CEO of Notion, Mr. Akshu Kutali, is to this guest. So now we're going to talk about that the San Francisco and the Fukuoka, the start of an ecosystem. This is the main topic today. Actually, San, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And and Mayor Takashima, thank you very much. Okay. So, first of all, and Mr. Akshay, would you please introduce the notion? You know, that an overview of the company or what kind of service you provide? Would you please introduce the notion? Of course. Well, thank you for having me uh, here today. Um, I've been to Japan a few times, so it's uh, actually wonderful to meet a mayor of uh, a city. Uh, I think Tatsu mentioned this is the fifth largest city. So it's such an honor to meet you, uh, Mayor. Uh, Notion is a startup that was started in 2013 uh, with the whole idea of making each person around the world more productive in the work they do. Uh, one of the things that is happening in the world today is that people are using a lot of different tools to do all the basic work. And, and what Notion does is it brings it together. So whether you want to take a note, you want to create a knowledge base, you want to manage your projects, you want to sort of, you know, really sort of build a future knowledge base for your growing company. Um, Notion really gives you all the building blocks to bring it together so that you don't have to go to a bunch of different tools and so that you can be more productive. Uh, and our, our goal is to really improve the productivity of the world. Okay, Dan, next I'd like to ask you to the Mayor Takashi, would you please introduce the attraction of the Fukuoka? Actually, San, have you ever visited Fukuoka before? I have not. I have not. I have been to uh, Tokyo and Kyoto so far, but in the next Japan trip, I hope to make it to Fukuoka. Okay, and thank you very much. Now, you must come visit the Fukuoka if you try to win over the, the global market. Because, first of all, and I'd like to show you that some of the, the, the images and the photos of Fukuoka, I'd like to introduce that, say, the photos and images of the city of Fukuoka first. Okay, would you please show the image, please? So now, would you please look at these images now? You have just uh, mentioned that the Fukuoka is in the ranked number fifth in terms of population, and now we have about uh, all, all the 20 major cities. Now, so that the gross rate of population is the number one, and also for that, the, the rate of the population of teens and the twenties, that the young, the youngest segments of the population is the highest in Japan and the Fukuoka city, and also for the tax revenue, have, is now in the seven years in the world we have just having the record high tax revenues in the past seven years in the world. That's only Fukuoka, and just like this, this is the city center of Fukuoka. Next, please. Actually, and uh, not only in the city center, but no, within the city center, you can look at a lot of the sceneries and you have a lot of expenses, just like we are we're blessed with this and the nature of that, the oceans, the mountains, and very close to the city center, and we have a lot of flowers like this, just like this. And when we visit the mountain, we have a four seasons, so they can have an old, different, and the natural, natural beauty you can enjoy in every four seasons, and also, and above all, the Fukuoka is real, real, real renowned of the, the delicious cuisines. You know, the tonkotsu ramen, that's noodles with the pork-based soup noodles, and then also, and it also renowned for the oyster or the sushi. There's a well blessed with that kind of a, a lot of the delicious seafoods. And we have a port. And when it comes to that, the production, I mean, that the, a, the, the catch of the fishery resources is number one in Japan, and of course. And so when it comes to sushi, and is more delicious than the Tokyo and also the prices, they're less than half 
that you have the sushi. In Tokyo. And also, we have a lot of the traditional the festivals, Hakata Gyo Yamakasa, and this is that the, every year we have this festival, and this is the well renowned for this decorated and the floats like this, marching around the city. In May, we have a Hakata Dontaku, that is also an, a, the most popular festival in the Golden Week season in, in Maine in Japan. And also, we have a longer than 2,000 years of history in Fukuoka. That's longer than even in Kyoto. So we have a lot of that kind of traditional and structures like the temples and the shrines. And just like also, we're providing lighting up services like this on also the Fukuoka Castle. It can be lighted up and really beautiful like this. And at the same time, when it comes to the startup, the promotions, we have a lot of startups. And we have about the startup opening rate is number one in Japan. And the, also, and the Fukuoka have, have been the lady just to be global is, the, is our topic. And from 11 countries in the world, about then we have the 15 cities we have after memorandum of understanding with the you know, cities so that we can lay out and improving that the business environment of the startup with each other. We're communicating and exchange notes and cooperating with each other over the cities and also and, and the, really the genuine, it's a center and the city center. We have a facility called the Fukuoka Group Next. This is the largest facility to start the status, including the lawyers or uh, that all this. And then they can have to make the consultation to the lawyers with a free of charge and they visit this facility. And also we have, a, this is a global startup center. So we have invited them from the, or in the foreign, the startups to, if they'd like to open a business here in Japan, we'd like to provide a follow-up and support. And just for information, and we, we also joined at the Global Challenge Program in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, and over 100 challengers and now and the visiting the, it's every year in the Silicon Valley from this event. Just like you know, that's an efforts we're making and also now we're showing that the beautiful scenery is of Fukuoka. How do you think about, how do you feel about Fukuoka? What's your impression? Well, this is wonderful to see. Um, and it's, um, well, it looks beautiful. I think all the, the cherry blossom trees there, the mountains, um, the food, uh, but I'm, I think I'm most excited by what you are doing, Mayor, with the startup programs. Uh, it's really inspiring to see how much you've invested in the program and how it's become the hub for all start Japanese startups. I think it's really inspiring, not just in Japan, but the world all over, how uh, a mayor is really pushing for this in a country like Japan. It's It's been really inspiring to watch from the sidelines. Akshi san, I just uh, we are looking forward to meet you in person in Fukuoka in the next in the next opportunity. Please, I look forward to it as well. Um, uh, I hope when this pandemic is over with and we can travel, uh, we we look forward to visiting Japan. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, I agree. Okay, then, I'd like to ask you about that, about the prospect of the global business expansions on the growth of the notion. Actually, son, the notion have just uh, and tried to become the unicorn company from the beginning of the foundation, or they didn't have an IPO, is also the options since from the founding, founding foundation of the company. Yeah, I think the, 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 the company was founded with a simple idea that um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a real need on the product side for all of the tools you use to come into one place. Um, so we call Notion all-in-one workspace. And the idea is that, you know, I think people are uh, sort of going between tools, they're missing information, they're not able to find the sort of the information they need. Um, and and Notion sort of brought it together. Uh, it took a long time for us to find product market fit. Um, so even though the company was started in 2013, we really hit our stride in the last few years. Um, and then last year we were uh, we became a unicorn, which I think is obviously something we are very grateful for. Um, and 
and we're investing a lot in the business. I think one of the things that's unique about Notion is that our customers are very global. Eighty um, percent of our usage is outside the U.S. Um, and actually, Japan is one of our fastest growing markets. Uh, this is why, uh, outside of San Francisco, we only you know we had two offices: Dublin and Tokyo. Uh, and we invested in Tokyo very early on because we think of Japan as a very important market. Um, uh, you know, we're seeing startups in Japan, but you're also seeing very large companies uh, now realizing that they need to really have a tool that they can enable work from wherever people are at home or offices or you know having distributed setup. Um, and so the last eighteen months, you know, we've invested a lot um, in these markets, trying to improve our offering. And the growth has been quite amazing. You know, just Japan, for example, for us has grown over five times. Um, and and if we continue on this path, we hope that we will be able to continue to remain a strong independent company, and at some point maybe even take even go public. Well, now, it seems like that, for example, that the, the traditional service like a memorandum or the spreadsheet or the other traditional services now get consolidated into one. And this is the core of a service, but the, the, any other competitors are there in the market. But now, in this circumstance, what do you think is that now the, the notion is strongly supported by the user? What is a competitive advantage? Yeah, so it's a great question. If you think about Microsoft Office as like the first generation of uh, productivity suite, right? We all use Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Uh, that was the first generation, right? It was built in the 80s and 90s. Um, I think the second generation is Google, when, when it really put the Google suite out there. Um, they put a lot of what you could do online right so there was a docs and sheets that allow you to really be productive and they put it online i think one of the things that's happening right now is that people realize that they all work differently like you work differently i work differently we all have different styles and the software we use at work today is very rigid it you know to change anything about the software you have to call a consultant and what Notion has done is it's giving you all the building blocks so you can customize and modify the software in a way how your brain works. Um, and that's that's why we hope Notion will be the third generation of productivity software after Microsoft and Google. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in that context, for example, and now it seems like the Europe paid much attention to the Japanese market. And uh, not only in the Japan, but also when it comes to that uh, Japanese market. And now we have been really successful in the Japanese market here. So, what is the secret? Well, here, also in here in Fukuoka, uh, when I just uh, check it out with the engineers, they all get excited about the notion. I would, everyone's saying that you know, now in the, I'm the user with notions on the lot of that engineers in Fukuoka. And I mentioned that I today have a session with that CEO of the notion. Everyone get excited. What do you think is the secret? You have been so much successful here in the Japanese market. We're very grateful for the support. Um, I think one thing that happened in the early days of Notion is when we launched, um, there were all these people all around the world who started using Notion and they started to build things with Notion. They created these templates that they put out there. Um, I still remember in 2019, when I came to Tokyo, um, uh, there was a Tokyo community of Notion users who, who did a meetup um, on a Sunday afternoon in, in Ginza. And you know, basically, fifty people showed up, and they they were all excited to show each other their Notion setups. Uh, and so, I think what Notion has had is a very tight community, community of builders, community of creators, who are now using the Notion platform to build really, really powerful things. So that's been our first phase of growth. Um, I would say today in Japan, uh, startups are particularly using Notion, even though like we have just very new to the market. We only started investing locally about a year ago, uh, but the Japanese version of Notion will be out. 
And so we're hoping that locals, like, and and maybe even some of the more legacy businesses, like, like some of the large companies that uh, Japan has, we're hoping that even large enterprises are also able to adopt Notion. And 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 so for that, we're investing in, you know, making the product more local. We're investing in a sales organization inside the country. We're also investing in support being Japanese. So we very much want to create Notion for the Japanese market so that it feels local. Um, one of the big programs that's been successful for us has been working with a startup program. And so I think as we expand on that program, we should work with the Fukuoka city to really make sure that we are able to provide Notion to all the startups that are in the Fukuoka area. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now you mentioned about uh, Fukuoka City. You mentioned that the Fukuoka City. Thank you very much. But just for my information, now in order to expand the business here in Japan, and uh, what shall I say that uh, everything can be done online on your part, or you have to have any physical office. Should be somewhere there in the Japan, for example, providing the customer support. You need to have some the physical base or physical office. Where everything can be done online. Well, the whole world has come, you know, sort of upside down in the last 18 months. Uh, you know, we were all in an office in San Francisco and we were all building the product in San Francisco. And one of the things that happened in the last 18 months is that every company, small or large, every company in every country around the world uh, tried to figure out how to continue doing work, whether you were at home or whether you're in the office. Uh, and Notion became one of those tools that really connected people together so that they could continue doing their work. And today, uh, you know, we do have offices in Tokyo and Dublin and San Francisco, uh, but uh, we're not tied to those offices. I think people can work from, you know, wherever they are uh, at the moment. Uh, and it also allows other companies, you know, whether you're distributed, whether you're in the office, whether you're a hybrid Notion can be a valuable tool that connects your employees to stay together. Um, and so currently we have a few people in the Tokyo office, but we're looking to expand. And, you know, I think we just um, acquired a company in India. And so we just opened our fifth office in Hyderabad, uh, which also has, you know, very fast growing startup scene, just like Japan. Mm. Right? And uh, I heard that the COVID-19 have changed the business and the market. But now this but the service notion offered is in a sense that have a, a, better, a, a, better, a better good environment for you. When this COVID-19, but you make it because uh, many people have now increasingly, number of the people are now working online and remotely. So that the notion have take advantage of this and the change of workplace caused by that COVID-19. But if you try to expand the business globally, and uh, everything have to be done remotely. And uh, that kind of a, how are you going to? But I think on the other hand that you have to customize part of a business or business model for each of these different countries in order to have the, the local and the relevance. What is that? The the thing. What, what what did you do to just to fit your business into this COVID nineteen environment? I think the the biggest thing that we did was we ourselves learned how to work distributedly. Uh, so I think we used our own product to understand how people work in a way where people are uh, in different places, not in the same room. And so we we were more connected to our product and we could see how Notion could be more useful for when people are not in the same room. Uh, they are working, you know, if you think about what Zoom has done, like you are talking, right? Like you and I are talking on Zoom. And it's a communication tool that has gotten us to, to together. Um, and similarly, I think we think of Notion as a collaboration tool. If we were working on a document together, if we were working on a project together, you need a, a place where I can see the work that you know you are doing and you can see the work that I'm doing. Um, and so it's become a really good complement to the communication products that exist out there. Um, I mean, I think in general, I think COVID has been obviously, uh, 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 you know, it's been a tough 18 months for the world. 
but in many ways it has also enabled people to work from wherever they want to work from uh it has changed the way people you know even think about work um and it's changed across cultures across countries and and one of the values of notion is to not be super rigid about how you want to use notion we want notion to be flexible and in a way that actually accommodates how each person or each company wants to use that tool i think that's probably the beauty of notion is that we give you the building blocks but then we let you decide what's the best framework for you uh and and we've been lucky to just watch how businesses have transformed their working uh leveraging tools like notion and zoom okay Okay, then, by the way, and uh, now you mentioned about the COVID-19, but the, the Fukuoka City, what, how the Fukuoka City challenges itself and this, under this COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, and uh, under this COVID-19 pandemic, um, uh, which I say that they also, actually, uh, now, that actually, some have mentioned that now uh, the service, the citizens won't have changed after this COVID-19, so that you know, now working on this online basis, and also when it comes to team building, even have to be done remotely, so that the different services have to be needed. And uh, different, we have to offer the new services, the new, we have to provide the services, the social services for a support that each of startup for the citizen challenge themselves to this new environment. For example, that in, we, we call it the beyond the, the COVID-19. So this is that sort of a creation of the new hometown and the Fukuoka. This is that concept. For example, you're working or remotely working together, but when you stay at home, you have your kids running around you, or you have your families have to take care of, you cannot concentrate on it. It is the case. So, and the different room in the same condos, and we offer them some kind of share, that kind of a part of the room in the same condos, and as a the new workspace. So this is the service. And the other effort is that, for example, a lot of different services, and uh, under this COVID-19, we offer that sometimes we offer the physical spaces, or some kind of services, so just like this. We like to make the turnaround and making this the risk of COVID-19 into the opportunity for the startups. Okay, this is that we have. How do you think about it? And actually, San, do you have any comments about this, the efforts of Fukuoka City? Well, it's it's super interesting what you're doing, uh, Mayor. Um, you are rethinking how cities of the future might work. Um, you are... Um, figuring out how, how societies will change in this new setup. And I think you're exactly right in that um, we are completely rewiring how even home and office work, right? Uh, I think a lot of people, like I have a kid at home and it's sometimes makes it difficult to maybe like do work, like be a good coworker and also be a good father, right? And, and so... I'm really fascinated by how you're rethinking, you know, what future living in these cities look like. Um, and so I'm very curious to hear more how you are sort of planning uh, across this and how startups and citizens of Fukuoka are, are taking those ideas. Okay. And uh, actually, um, here in the Fukuoka city, and, uh, we have the declared and the startup city, and it was the 2012. We made a declaration of the startup city as a Fukuoka city, so it was just exactly when that notion of starting the service, and at exactly the same time, we have made a declaration of startup city. So because and here in Japan, it is still and uh, some environment have been difficult for the startups to grow. And it was, uh, for example, about uh, 30 or 40 years ago in Japan, and the automobiles and uh, home electric appliances and trading houses. These are the, all of the uh, industrial bases. They are manufacturing, they're selling, that's the autos and the home appliances. And, uh, 
Japan was told to be the number one, and these business models. But all these major companies have been have been doing well. But on the other hand, our society is getting all the more aging society, and it seems like that not so many people is willing to take risk. So that's why. And it's been really difficult, and an environment that the startup to actually to set operations and the start up the business. So that's why we made the declaration of startup in 2012, so that we like to change this atmosphere and environment. And also, we are a, appointed as the national strategic special zone for the global the, uh, startups and the job creations. And that's for the legalization. The deregulation is now available. And the this and the specific and the zone designation. And when startup try to set the brand new service, for example, and if it's some of the, the difficulty and under the current Japanese regulations, but now this is a special zone so that they can enjoy some kind of uh, deregulation even in, in this the zone of Fukuoka. So this is that our concept to offer the kind of our environment and the cities in which many of the startup is easier to start the business. And so that's why, and we have a lot of that 11 countries, we have the memorandum of understanding with relevant cities and the startups from these cities are coming to Fukuoka to start. Uh, now, also we have uh, a tax reduction for that corporate tax for startups. And now the, the visible and uh, optical technology for the telecommunication, that is that now coming out from Estonian startup, but they are also can enjoy that the corporate tax reduction. So this is a good example for when it comes to that the tax reduction to corporations and the Fukuoka city is only for this Fukuoka city is the lowest in terms of the, co and the corporate tax in terms of the startups, I think. That's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I'm curious. I guess how how did you um, uh, I guess how did you really set this strong vision for the startup program, and and are are there other cities you look for inspiration for this program? Okay. So uh, and in fact, and uh, when I visited Seattle, that visit inspired me with this concept. When I visited Seattle and I uh, visited so a lot of the Amazon, the, the, the Microsoft, the, and the Boeing, the Costco, and I did a lot of the global companies, I looked in, in the Seattle, and the headquarters in the Seattle, and from which they expanded business globally. So that actually, there are all of the other companies' population that concentrated in Tokyo, the mega city, but when I visited in Seattle, now it is just uh, with the poor city, the platform that's the capital of the US. And I just wonder why this in the global companies can be and born and can grow. And, and I found out that the characteristics, weakness of Seattle is quite similar to Fukuoka, I find out. It's a port city and the residential zone and the working zone. These are a, quite, clearly separated in zone, clearly. So that's why they can switch the mood between this and the residential area and the working area. And of course, that different from the New York or that major cities, that the cost was really low than the big city. So that, and they can just uh, try and try and err. They can make that. And again and again, and also that open seas of the university is open in Seattle. So when I just brief it about that uniqueness of Seattle, I'm just uh, thinking about, um, it seems like that now they're talking about Fukuoka. So I find Find out the, really that the similarities of Seattle and Fukuoka. So that have inspired me that now so far that we have been saying and arguing that the Fukuoka is good for the tourism, good for the living, but actually not only for the tourism or the living environment, we can take advantage of this environment also for the business. When I look at that, the, the startups and have a growing, a booming in Seattle and really inspired. That's why I think about so that we need to put emphasis more on that and, and the startup and the with a new business. And after that, I made the declaration of a startup in Fukuoka City in 2012. That's wonderful. Is there anything we can do, Mayor, to uh, help um, on the startup program you have? Um, what are, I guess, in your, it's been nine years since you started the program. Is there anything yeah. missing um, that we could be helpful with? 
。じゃあ、私たちが何か9年目に何かお手伝いをして追加できることはえっと、ノーションが福岡市に拠点を設けていただけることがこれは一番だと思います、ね。But, but, but first and foremost, I hope that you and have your office or base here in the center of Fukuoka City, we have the, and the Fukuoka Growth Next. And we have that's the largest and the startup supporting facility. So, and this can serve as a hub for which that's the, they can have to grow the business. And a lot of that's, that's the challenges get together. And if we have the notion together with them now, because that you're the unicorn, if you're the unicorn and join this environment in Fukuoka, you're really encouraging for us. And also, and if we have the, the basis and the Fukuoka, then the Fukuoka city. Of Fukuoka can fully support your success. And if there's any kind of stumbling blocks or the barriers that prevent your further growth in the Japan, you can help you to break that barriers. And we can also help to further expand the business globally and from Japan. So I think that's really the win win relationship. And I make my personal commitment as mayor to you that you can do that. Arigato, arigato. Really looking forward to. Uh, visiting and, and, and expanding our operations there.、Um, it's very inspiring what you're doing there.、Um, especially, you know, I think,、um, I think you became mayor when you were 36, and I'm 35 right now, and it's very inspiring what you've done in your life.、Uh, really? And, and in terms of,、um, you know, really changing a city completely, transforming it, and, and, and really driving it into the future, it's, it's very inspiring. Yes, right. Yes. So, this is yes. And、uh, now we are and living in this age, and we have to m o v e to an updated society, update the world for passing this society on to the next generation. And so, we share the same feeling and the same commitment, I think, particularly now we are struggling under the COVID 19 and also the brand new technologies are coming up. And so, that we are getting into the more uncertainty. So, so in this, in this、uh, taking these opportunities, we'd like to create our new and future world together with you. And also, there are a lot of the politicians, and、um, actually, that's the old age. So, that's the old age. So, that's why they do not take so much risk for the future. And、uh, they also insist on the traditional systems, legacy systems. And the new startup, they just arrive with that kind of a traditional s o r t They are not so much aggressive for the future, but now, including myself, and then I, actually we have the Startup City Promotion Councils. This is the organization of the, this is the group of the mayors and of the governors and who support the startup. I'm a leader of this council and group, but also for the, there are many other cities who themselves the challenge themselves for an updating and for the future. So that I'd like to work together with you, with all these and the mayors and the governors. And in order to do that, and that we need to have an actual startups that materialize our concept. So that I strongly hope that. And Uh, your ideas of the notion, they are trying to change the world. And so, the offering that the service, aggressively offering the services that really need all the users and consumers. And this attitude of the notion really, really inspired me. Amazing. Great to hear. Well, you should also be happy to know that、um, you know, the person who runs Japan Notion,、uh, Katsuki o Nishi,、uh, is from the Fukuoka Prefecture. Um, so, you should meet with him at some point. I think、um, he's from the same route. Okay, understood. So, and,、uh, I, and I'm looking forward to meet Nishi san. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, then, now,、uh, now the, the mayor and talking about the, the startup and the, the business. Next, I'd like to ask you the, the ecosystem, actually, Sam, and、uh, what is that and any pros and cons of the ecosystem in San Francisco? Well, I think,、um, you know, Silicon Valley has a very rich history um, of um, entrepreneurship, technology.、Uh, You know, I think 
less than few decades ago uh, i think a lot of this area was all uh, apple orchards it was farm farmland and now it's become this you know heart of silicon you know heart of technology all around the world um so i think there's a lot i mean the city i mean the area offers a lot right i think it has access to amazing talent every like the smartest people around the world come here to work and study uh, it has access to capital so you essentially you know i went to stanford for my masters program and and you had very quick access to investors giving you feedback and giving you funding um so that's really valuable i think you also have access to role models i think to your point mayor i think when you see true successful entrepreneurs around you where you can learn from them and you can inspire get inspired from them um it really drives the it really drives the sort of you know the inspiration for for the next generation of entrepreneurs when i was in stanford um joining a a large company like microsoft was always the backup plan the the first plan for everybody was always to start your own company i think that was sort of the air that exists in this valley is that everybody wants to do that everybody wants to start their own company uh, it's always sort of the plan a is always to you know do that and i think that creates you know uh, creates a very vibrant ecosystem i think people are willing to take risks here people are willing to experiment here people are not afraid of failing um and and so i think there's yeah i mean there's a lot lot to learn from this area um one thing that's happened in the last 18 months is because of the pandemic and people working from different places uh people have realized that you know they can actually live in their hometown or they can move back to their own country or they should they can live in japan because they wanted to live in japan and work and i think that's possible today uh and so in many ways there's an opening in the world today where you can still be accessing and talking to the best talent uh but instead of in the same city you're now talking on the internet uh and 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 i think that's you know i think some people are definitely moving from here to other places and and it's it's a win for the world i mean think i think if you know some people do move back to fukuoka and start their venture there um that's that's really really good for for that ecosystem to grow uh you know i grew up in india and india has also transformed a lot i think india used to be you know in the 90s used to be a service economy i think mostly uh but in the last decade india is now home to i think you know i don't know maybe in the order of tens of different unicorns that exist um and and people are building real products there right um and so uh i think some of it is like it it requires this sustained investment in the region to sort of get good talent get good capital get good role models and it's very aligned to the way you are thinking about fukuoka right i think it's 10 years in but now you'll see some successes coming out of fukuoka that can then inspire the next generation of people to start building their companies uh and and i think silicon valley and san francisco has the benefit of just a lot of successful companies have come out of this area and so so you're surrounded by a lot of very good talent who've seen that success how do you feel me yeah san francisco ne mo san yes and um, in silicon valley and san francisco is uh, and actually i also visited there but uh, at a real, real many restaurants we can meet many different variety of people and uh, we can just uh, and i just agree to just uh, have this trade and have a synergy with that strength with each other and it, it's a fail just we just start from we can start from this, the square one there's really that the, the strong point and in the silicon valley but on the other hand they also in it can the fukuoka uh, and uh, actually uh, we are administrator and uh, private sector so that we have just all three parties and 
Hey, there's a cooperation very close among this to the government, and the industry, and academia. And we can work together as an interdisciplinary way with a team. So this is quite different from the other cities. So there's not so much opportunity that the governor of Tokyo is meeting so much discuss with the startups. But now here in Fukuoka City, and the startup is in the center, is at the core. So if I just uh, go visit them, they listen to the pitches of the startups, and also Go. They were, nowadays, the government, the city government, of course, and they aggressively support them to make them a success story. This is quite unusual in the other area in Japan. This is a really a good, big advantage of Fukuoka, and also that we are in the local cities, and uh, many local cities are and suffer from some of the lack of the, the money, the lack of the resources. But now, how we can overcome for all these and uh, discuss resources, and that we have overcome of this issue here in Fukuoka, as so just one team, not only for the government, but also the startups and the private sectors and academia. And in, in this way, now we have a very good circular ecosystems and growing together. And this is not only for the Fukuoka city, but also, and we think that this, if we can have this similar ecosystem, not only here in Fukuoka, but also for the many other cities in the region in Japan, we can lay the ground for that many of these young stars and startups may challenge themselves to the next stage. This is what I hope. This is excellent. I think there's I think in the U.S., um, there's not a lot of government intervention for startups. I think the only city that is doing so recently is Miami. I think the mayor of Miami has been spending a lot of time trying to attract more startups to that city. Um, and in many ways, he has been very successful in in pulling a lot of companies to move to Miami to start there because he's very supportive like yourself he's very supportive of the startup ecosystem he wants more and more companies to start there um and i think that's probably the closest example that we have in the us yes, sure. no, Okay, yes. Understood. So, here in Japan, for example, in the US, and it's not, of course, but uh, for example, and uh, the power, the kickboard, okay, there's no, almost it's totally, a, it's not available on the road of Japan because that is strictly and uh, regulated. And because a lot of the regulations, regulation here in Japan, but now the power, the kickboard, okay, and even we like to ride it, and only part of that, for example, part of the Tokyo Fukuoka city is now and can a, have that the deregulations of using that the part of Kikpo, for example, and, but different from the US, and there are a lot of the tons of and full of the regulations are there in Japan, so that's why in order to, and to clear all these barriers and the government administration have to support the private sectors. So this is a quite different environment and the factor between Japan and US. So I'm really interested in that's the actual example in the Miami you have introduced. I'd like to study more about it. Okay. Thank you very much for, and I'd like to just keep listening to that interesting conversation, but now getting close to that, that, that time and, and in time. So I'd like to make some the last question. First of all, actually, Sam, uh, so this ascension, that means to, and writing to the, the next stages. How, what, what's your advice for that new Japanese startups to and, uh, become the unicorn and they make it to the ascent to the next stage? What's your advice to, the, uh, to that and what should we do? Well, I think you got to start, you, you need to start with the, the problems you're, you're seeing around the world in terms of what you're trying to solve, uh, what pain exists in the world today that, that you are trying to make better. Uh, I think you need to start with that. And then you have to think about what technology you can leverage to really you know, make that a whole lot better. I think uh, in our case, you know, in Notion's case, um, we saw that people were just increasing the number of tools that people use at work. Um, uh, I used to work at LinkedIn and, you know, I think even to do some of the basic work, you would use 10 plus tools to, to actually do that work. And, and we thought there was a better day to, the way to do that work, uh, a better way to stay connected. Uh, and, and that's the problem we solved. And, and that led us to becoming a unicorn. So I would say 
I think the the biggest thing a startup can do is to stay close to the customer, understand the pains that the customer has, and and solve it in a in a meaningful way. Um, uh, I, I would say the one other thing is I think you know the unicorn is given to um, unicorn is like a term given to companies who get to a billion dollars of valuation. Um, I think internally at Notion, you know, we're obviously happy to be a unicorn, but but I think we focus a lot on also building a long-term sustainable business. I think one of the things that's unique about Notion is that it has been a profitable business for the last three plus years. And, and we have a very simple business model. We build software, we build tools, people buy those tools and, and we continue to grow. And, and, you know, I think uh, we obviously benefit from, you know, being on the unicorn list, but I think we are, are the, the thing that drives us forward is to continue to solve problems and to continue to build a good business that can be, you know, that allows us to continue to be sustainable long-term. Hmm. Okay. Actually, sorry, I have uh, one notion other question. And uh, uh, the notion, uh, for example, in case you uh, break into the Fukuoka city, is there any conditions and the request to Fukuoka city if you try to actually expand the business to the Fukuoka? Do, do you have any request? I'd like to know about it. Yeah, we would love to figure out a way where every startup in Fukuoka um, uses Notion. Um, uh, I know Amazon. I know Amazon Web Services is a big partner of yours. Um, uh, so, if you think of Amazon Web Services as the server infrastructure that every startup needs, um, you know, Notion is the collaboration infrastructure that every startup needs. And uh, we will be available in Japanese language, and we want to provide the operating system to every startup so that they don't have to figure out how to do investor meetings. They don't have to figure out how to take, um, you know, build a knowledge base. They don't have to figure out how to create culture and values uh, inside the company. So we want to basically build an operating system for startups. And we would love to figure out a way to, um, you know, partner with every startup that's in Fukuoka and maybe maybe offer them uh, credits so that they can use Notion for free for some time. Um, we would love to figure out a way to hire people in Fukuoka in the long term um, and, and improve our presence there. Uh, I think Fukuoka is the, sounds like is the startup city of Japan. And, and I think we, we, we need to be there. Really, we are looking forward to working together with you. Yes, thank you. Okay, the last of all, the, the mayor, Takeshima, and uh, would you please talk about the perspective for the future of the uh, city and uh, your message to Notion? Yes, and now, um, uh, now the reason why we are, the Fukuoka city is um, supporting startup is that, you know, because they would like to create a society in which that's the, those who are taking risks would be respected by society. But in order to do that, uh, first off, we'd like to start from the Fukuoka city. So that's, that's very important. Someone have to start it. So, uh, because now we are living here in the society because each of them are ancestors and the, the humans in the past have made and uh, challenged themselves and tried to evolve. That's why we're, we're living on that basis of our ancestors. So that's why our generations and have to pass that to the better life, the better society on to the next generations. So in order to do that, now, now that we have a very good environment and technology in which we can connect with each other in a global basis, and if we can they come up with and create that the wonderful service that can change the world. So it will really exciting. And uh, if we're going to do that, and I'd like to just uh, create the city and we're going to do that together with the startups. And so that is actually that ascension. 
That's the rising to the next levels and next uh, stages. So uh, this is the wonderful and excellent service and notion that we're already been and the use of many users. And uh, when I mention only about the notions, a lot of engineers get excited and even just to listen to that uh, your service. So that I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person here in Fukuoka when you visit here. And also, and I'd like to work together with you as a member of the team of Fukuoka and the challenge ourselves for the next future. Thank you very much for having the session. Thank you. Akshay-san, Takashima, uh, Mayor Takashima, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Arigato.